Saving money will always be a huge topic of discussion because everything we do revolves around money. A lot of people want to retire early, a lot of people want to join the fire department which is financial independence and retiring early. And the truth is for you to be able to do that you need to have quite a good amount of savings. And I know that I'm not where I want to be yet but I've been able to set aside like saved a good chunk of money that I would say that I'm proud of and I want to share some of the things or the habits that helped me save more than $30,000 and you watching it might be able to learn then one or two from it. Saving 10,000, 20,000, 100,000, 200,000, to some people it feels like a myth. But the truth is, it's achievable. It is simple, but it is not easy. So here are some of the habits or some of the things that I have been able to do to help me save quite amount of money. And I hope that you also find it very beneficial. So the first thing that helps me save over $30,000 is having a high income skill. Is the truth. The truth is, having a low income skill will make you work longer and harder. Maybe, let's say for example, I'm doing a receptionist job. I spend eight hours on the job and then you have someone who is maybe an engineer or a lawyer that spends the same eight hours. But in that eight hours, probably the lawyer in a month might be making around seven thousand eight thousand dollars and the receptionist might be making two thousand or one thousand dollars every month you cannot really compare these people's savings because if the lawyer is a good saver and the receptionist is a good saver the lawyer can maybe at the end of the month save like four thousand while the receptionist will save maybe like one thousand or five hundred depending so no matter how you want to look at it if you want to save a huge amount of money and you want to save fast you need to have a high income skill if what you're currently doing now is not paying you high enough and maybe you're not even enjoying it why don't you then find a way to learn a high income skill and put in the same amount of hours and earn better money i'm not saying that you must have a high income skill but what i'm saying is if you're going to work so you can also work for someone that will pay you higher money than doing a job that is paying you way lesser money when you can increase your skills so if you have a skill or you're looking for skills high income skills i'm probably going to do a separate videos maybe the next video on high income skills you can learn in 2023 that would pay you a whole lot of money. So having a high income skill helped me save because by the time I remove my rent, remove my feeding, maybe give my loved ones, buy the things I love, I still have a substantial amount of money that I can put into savings or investing. Which brings me to the second one which is taking risk. Taking risk has really really helped me be able to save because in terms of taking risk I've also been able to make more money. Like investing in crypto, I took risk in investing in stocks to be able to cash out profits and also taking risks to leave my country to come to an entirely different continent. That's taking risks because I wanted to work for international bodies that will recognize the labor and my hard work and pay me more money. When I was working for a company in Nigeria, I was earning way lesser money compared to someone who is probably maybe working in the US or in Germany or UK doing the same amount of work that I'm doing but earning way better. So me taking that risk and saying, I have to do this for myself. I want to go to an entirely different continent that I know no single soul to be able to do work that will, you know, appreciate the labor that I'm putting in. So if you're someone who is very scared of taking risk, you may not be able to achieve much. That's just the truth. You have to take risk. And there is this adage that says, it's riskier to not take risk than to take risk. Take the risk on yourself. Take the risk and say, oh, I'm going to start this today. Oh, I'm going to learn this. If it means you starting afresh, take that risk and start afresh. They tell you there is always an opportunity for you to grow or find out more when you leave your comfort zone. If I stayed in Nigeria, yes, I probably might have maybe worked for one of the big tech companies in Nigeria, but you still will not be able to compare what I'll be earning in Nigeria to what I'm earning abroad here. That also brings me to the third one, which is investing in myself. The truth is getting a high income skill requires you to keep leveling up. Let's say, for example, when I got my first job abroad, when I came here, I came here as a junior software engineer. Imagine if I maybe didn't invest in myself or improve in myself, I wouldn't be able to get promoted for my income to keep increasing. So one thing that I hold very dear is to keep improving myself. Another way I also do that too is to create contents, research some of my contents. There was this very nice side gig I got that paid quite a huge amount of money. And one of the reasons they hired me was because I create content on YouTube here. And they saw you know the kind of work I did and they're like oh we love what you do would want to pay you to do so 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 this for us so investing in yourself can never 
cargo out of style. It gives you the confidence to even ask for more. So if I have invested in myself, let's say for example, currently I work as a senior software engineer. If I didn't invest in myself, I wouldn't have that knowledge to be able to apply for a role of a senior and get paid as a senior. But if I didn't invest in myself, I probably up to now could have been a junior engineer earning what I was earning in maybe 2020, earning it now still as a junior engineer. So investing in yourself would go a long way for you. It has helped me. I cannot say less. It has helped me. I write articles online and I get paid. And why I write is that every day that I write, I improve. Every day that I write, I read other people's articles to learn. Never stop learning. If you want to increase your self-value, always be learning. Don't ever stop learning. I invested in myself to be able to get where I am today, which is one of the things that helped me increase my self-worth, that also helped me increase the way, the amount I charge companies if I want to work for them. So that also was one of the things that helped me increase my income that I was now able to save a lot of money. Which also brings me to the fourth point, which is perseverance. The truth is, it's never going to be easy. Especially maybe let's say, for example, you want to switch to an entirely different career that you have no knowledge about, but it's a high income skilled career. Let's say, for example, you want to switch to cyber security or software engineering or data science. It's not going to be easy. When you start out initially, you might even not get paid. You might work as an intern, like how I started. You might work as an intern, you might work as a junior, whatever. Start as a junior level, whatever it is. But do not give up. Persevere and continue. Because the more you keep on persevering and continuing, the more you can, that will present an opportunity for you to see chances or good things that you didn't know was there. But if you give up and stop, you won't even know if you would have made it or not. So when things get tough, it doesn't mean that you should quit. It just means that it's one of those things. And the truth is, the more challenges you face, the more you increase your experiences and skills. Let's say for example as a software engineer, most times when there are bugs or when they give you a challenge that you don't know, it will push you to go and probably do some research or do some studies. Once you've done that study and done that research and you fix that bug, that knowledge is your own. You cannot use that knowledge to say it can even be something that will push you to the next level. So it could be that, oh, I was able to improve this and that. For that, I'm going to charge extra. You need to improve, increase my salary because I can do this and that that other people cannot do. So persevere. When it's hard, cry. Go to your room, cry, wipe your tears, rest. If you want to take a break, maybe one or two days, one week, one month, take the break or come back and continue. So when you persevere, it will give you more room to grow because you're now out of your comfort zone. And the truth is, the more you're out of your comfort zone, the more you're stretching yourself and the more, when you stretch yourself, you see that some things that are even a huge obstacle for people will no longer be an obstacle for you. And then you can easily grow and increase your capability, your knowledge to be able to charge more, to get more money and then to be able to save more money because you're earning more money, right? Which brings me to the next one, which is side hustles. I cannot say this enough. The truth is, beginning of last year, I was so broke. <laughs> it's only my very close friends that would know. I was so broke because of some personal things I had to do with the money I saved. But getting a side hustle was one of the things that helped me boost my savings drastically. Like, boost him. He struck it up. Get a side hustle. The truth is, one in income with this economy now is no longer enough. It's the sad reality. The things that you could afford with maybe earning $40,000 three, four years ago, you can no longer buy those things earning even $50,000 now because inflation has changed everything for everybody. So if you don't have a side hustle, unless maybe your one stream of income, you trust it with your whole chest that it cannot get cut short one day. And then you know that, that one stream of income takes care of all your needs and even provides surplus at the end of the day. Then you can stick to the one side. But for me, one of the ways that I was able to save more was through side hustles. And what I did was from my side hustles, I don't touch the money. I either invest the money or keep it in my savings account. So side hustles really helped me boost up my savings. It helped me increase my savings so much, honestly. And then the next point that helped, another thing that helped me was networking. The truth is, whether you like it or not, your network is your net worth. The more useful people you know, the more your net worth increases. And I can explain. Um, let's say, for example, there was this side hustle or side gig that I got. And then one of my friends,
friends there all he just needed to do was say oh i'm also looking in case your company is hiring or in case your company is doing this it just took only one word for me to tell someone oh i have a friend that knows how to do this and the person got interviewed and got employed and the person also said you know that was the person's side hustle and the person's savings increased so what i'm saying this is the more useful people you know the better let's say for example maybe you are launching a business and everybody in your contact list is, is they're not useful to you in any way you probably might not go as far as compared to when you have people in your network that can move mountains for you or when an opportunity presents itself the people in your network will mention your name even when you're not in that room the more useful people you know the better the chances of you finding opportunities that will either bring money or lead you to someone that will give you money or something that will give you money so me networking has really helped me there are some friends that if i'm looking for maybe i want to invest in this or that and i already know that they have knowledge in this i would reach out to them the, when they tell me it will even save me time for me to do more research i don't know if that makes sense so if you have useful people in your network it will go a long way for you if i'm looking to maybe look for a side so there was one of my side gigs that got shot I, all i did was to tell one of my friends oh i no longer have this side gig and i know you're doing something like this in case an opportunity comes for you and you think it will benefit me let me know so things like that has helped me along the way to be able to make more money and save more money which also brings me to the next one which is learning from people i admire i know that a lot of us have role models some people don't even have role models and that is okay so for me to be able to even start the some of the side hustles that i do like writing creating content investing maybe looking for a second job things like that i learned these things from people that i look up to it's not just something that i woke up and i knew there are a lot of people that i watch online there are some friends that i have that i admire that do things that i want to do so me being able to learn from those people opened the opportunity for me to make money so if you have people that you look up to and you admire try to see how they are also increasing their lives financially and see if it's something that you can do i'm not saying there are some people that don't even have people you mustn't even be very close to these people you could just be someone that you admire online and they share some of these things things that have helped them succeed you could try to follow in their path to be able to better yourself and then at the end be able to get money maybe through salary or through your business or through maybe selling your products so these are some of the things that has really helped me and now that brings me to the last but not the least which is reviewing my finance i do this every month actually <laughs> I have a sheet where you know I track all my finances, I every single penny that goes out. And why I track or review my finances is to tell me how far I have come or maybe how where I'm falling short. Because making money and keeping money are entirely different two different things you could be earning 500,000 every month and at the end of the month once the salary comes maybe after like two weeks you start begging and borrowing money there are people that earn over 200,000 and they still live paycheck to paycheck it's not because the money is not enough it's just because they don't know maybe they don't know what is coming in and what is going out if you don't do retrospective on your finance you really really struggle to know where you stand doing retrospective on my finance has really helped me because if not that last year i probably wouldn't have known that my money bag was that low that i needed to you know look for a side hustle that will increase my financial situation so if you always review your finance it will show you how far you've come or how low you're doing and then also remember that your own goals and other people's goals are not the same so check out okay this is the goal i want for this year i want to save ten thousand dollars set realistic goals use what you currently have to set your goals don't go and be using things that maybe they are promising you or things that look promising in the future to make you know to set goals let's say for example this year you want to save ten thousand dollars but what you earn every year is five thousand dollars and you know that you're not going to get a side job it doesn't make sense so if you're going to set financial goals set financial goals that are very realistic right so if maybe at the end of the year your income increases then you can now increase the financial goal so this is also one of the things that helped me to set realistic goals when it comes to saving my money i hope these things were very useful to you if you have um, any other way or any other thing that has helped you save your money or reach your financial goal please drop it in the comment section so that other people too can benefit from it i hope this video was very useful to you let me know please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in my next video bye guys <laughs>